stand up. I'm pretty sure I one of them. Wait, why are you putting Stop. your hands on me? Stop. Why are you putting what are your badge numbers? Step back, okay? No. Officer, you're a black, bad police officer and you don't deserve to. Officers Brian Wilson and Kurt Flynn from the Louisville Police Department decided to turn their patrol duties into a sick game. Dressed in their uniforms but rolling in an unmarked vehicle, these guys thought it would be fun to dehumanize and degrade the folks in their district. Their twisted game involved arming themselves with soft drinks and, believe it or not, throwing them at pedestrians. <laughs> I might, you might even get it to stop. The <laughs> road? Yeah. Up against the building. Don't miss. Both of these guys ended up copping a guilty plea for messing with the rights of people in Louisville. But Officer Brian Wilson had a whole extra set of charges against him. Things got messy when a federal investigation dug into him hacking a woman's Snapchat and snagging explicit pics of her. He went full creep mode and threatened to blast those pics online unless she sent him more. Eventually, he owned up to conspiring to commit cyberstalking, piling onto his list of charges. The judge gave Kurt Flynn a three-month prison sentence, plus three years of supervised release, and 120 hours of community service. Brian Wilson got hit with a 2.5-year prison term, three years of supervised release, and the same community service gig. There's no chance of parole in the federal prison system, making their sentences even more stringent. In Arkansas, a police officer, Mike Moore, confronted DeMarcus Bunch and his cousin, asserting that they didn't belong in his city. Bunch and his cousin approached Officer Moore after noticing they were being followed. Following the incident, Bunch filed a complaint with the local police chief. However, receiving no response, they decided to share the footage on social media. I'm Mike Moore, all right? We Dale Scribner, nephew. Yeah, we there just trying to record okay, the video. Uh, we, we just noticed you've been following us everywhere. Right now? Yeah. You know why? Because you don't belong in my city. How we we from here? But you understand, I know who my people are, right? Yeah. Who belongs here? Who doesn't? Who who don't? We got gang wars oh. going on. We got all kinds of stuff. And I come from the big city where this stuff's small. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Oh, yeah. Do your thing. Oh, yeah. We, we don't. You say we don't belong in your city, though. Can I say something? Yeah. Okay. You don't. I have never seen you here before, and I know almost everybody. Man, here. I grew your up family? in one hundred and one. Well, good. I, I, well, I, grew, good. I graduated good. from England High. Well, good for you. My name's Mike Moore. Are you all right. Okay. I'm not from here. Step away from my car. I'm about to get my dog out there. Ooh, yeah, they get away from it. <laughs> nah, he said we don't belong in his city. We don't belong in his city? Yeah, he said we don't belong in his city. He ain't even from in. Yeah, we from in. That's what I told him. You ain't from here. Subsequently, the police chief announced Moore's dismissal from the force. On May 25, 2019, John Kelly and his wife engaged in sign language communication during a disagreement on the side of a road. Unfortunately, a passerby misunderstood their interaction and called 911 to report a potential physical disturbance. Responding to the call, three officers from the San Marcos Police Department approached John, yelling commands from various directions. Ignorant of John's deafness, two officers proceeded to tase him in front of his wife and children. A third officer, approaching from behind, 
kicked John twice in the side. Despite John's attempts to convey his deafness, it took some time for one of the officers to realize the situation and provide him with a notepad and pen. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back, sir. Put your hands behind your back, sir. Put Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Roll over. Grab his hand. Just. Get on, your, get on your stomach! Uh, Run around! Just have him stand up. I think he's cooperative. Let me see okay, your hands. 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 Let me see your hands. I think he's going to cooperate. John was never handcuffed, and no charges were filed once officers confirmed no physical assault had occurred. In May 2021, a federal lawsuit was filed against the city of San Marcos and the three officers, alleging civil rights and ADA violations. The suit claims police failed to communicate effectively with John, who is deaf, before deploying a taser and kicking him. The officers remain employed and have completed a course on interacting with deaf drivers. The trial is scheduled for the future. This video represents one of the earliest police interactions recorded on a cell phone that gained widespread attention after being uploaded to the internet. In February 2008, just three years after the launch of YouTube, a video surfaced depicting a 2007 encounter involving Salvatore Rivieri, a 19-year veteran of the Baltimore police and a group of teens at the Inner Harbor. The video begins with the officer stopping and asking one of the boys if he has spoken to his friend about something the officer had mentioned earlier. Yeah, I to tell him to your phone. you hear me now? Hey, can you hear me? Don't get defensive, son. You just spend some time in juvenile. You're not allowed to ride your skateboards down here. Nowhere. Yeah, I didn't hear you. That's why I asked you if you had the thing on. Don't get defensive with me. You back off me. I'm not your father. You hear me? I'm not your father. You give that attitude to your father. You give it to me, I'll smack you upside okay, I, I don't have a shut father. Shut your mouth, I'm talking. There, shut up, dude. Where are you from? Dude, I didn't do anything. The officer, Robert Rivieri, took the boy's skateboard and placed it in his cruiser, returning a moment later to continue threatening him. Officer Rivieri collected the boy's name and asked him numerous questions in an aggressive and disrespectful manner, violating the department's code of professional conduct. Are you from the county or something? No, I didn't do anything. I didn't hear you. Where are you from? I'd like to talk to him. First of all, you disrespected me, this badge, and my department. Do you understand me? When I'm talking to you, you shut your mouth and you listen. Obviously, your parents don't put a foot in your butt quite enough because you don't understand the meaning of respect. First of all, you better learn how to speak. I'm not man. I'm not dude. I am Officer Rivieri. Now, the sooner you learn that, the longer you're going to live in this world. Because you go around doing this kind of stuff, somebody's going to kill you. How old are you? 14. Your number. Sit down. Did you not just hear me? Son, what is your problem? Do you go to school and give your teacher this kind of lip and back talk your teacher? Then what makes you think you can come and do it to a police officer? Stop calling me dude. 
A dude is somebody who works on a ranch. Your friends got brains in their head. They know when to shut their mouth. You just keep flapping. Now, what's your name? Is your mother home? You want to call her so I can talk to her? And I'll explain to her what the problem is. Despite the excessive use of physical force and misconduct, nothing happened initially, as the boys did not report the incident. Almost a year later, they posted the video on YouTube, and it quickly went viral, reaching over 3 million views. The boy's father was unaware of the incident until the video was uploaded. The incident with Officer Rivieri in Baltimore sparked public outrage and prompted an internal investigation. Despite evidence of assault and civil rights violations, no criminal charges were filed, and Rivieri received a six-day paid administrative leave. A disciplinary panel later cleared him of serious allegations, but a commissioner terminated him for not filing a police report. The union doesn't oppose the commissioner you know, increasing the penalty. We think that moving from a six-day suspension to a termination, again, is an abuse of his power and discretion. Doesn't show... Um my initial contact with Eric, Eric Bush and his friends, we were on the steps of the Science Center, Maryland Science Center, where they were told by me that uh, skateboarding is prohibited by law. Uh, the video doesn't show me handing him back his skateboard, shaking his hand, nor does it show my phone conversation with his mother, where she was told of the incident and advised that if Eric left the area, he would not be arrested. Uh, at that time, I didn't feel that giving Eric a juvenile arrest record for skateboarding uh, just because he was showing off for his friends was the thing to do. Uh, Commissioner Bielfeld's decision to fire me uh, has devastated me and my family. I'm sure that we all have moments in our life where we would like a do-over, and to judge a person's whole life or career on that one moment is to, well, say the, to say the least, it's unfair. Rivieri attempted to defend himself, appearing on talk shows. Eric and his family filed a lawsuit alleging excessive force and civil rights violations. Initially dismissed for a filing deadline, they appealed, and a settlement was likely reached. Rivieri sued for wrongful termination, but his lawsuit failed, and the appeal by the Fraternal Order of Police was also unsuccessful. Virgilio Mendez found himself unlawfully detained without reasonable suspicion or probable cause, enduring nearly six minutes of physical abuse from officers, including choking and taunting, as he pleaded for his family. Shockingly, just minutes after this encounter, the officer who initiated the unlawful arrest collapsed and died from a sudden heart attack. Mendes, initially charged with murder, which later was downgraded to manslaughter, has been in custody since May of 2023. Stop! 422 St. Jones. 1012 civil 13 P. Hispanic male, white t-shirt, uh, black shorts, Super Rams 16. 3576, you have to hold me. Stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, why, when I was driving around. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. stop, stop, stop. Uh, in, in. Okay, but why did you get up and walk away? Huh? When you saw me, you yeah. got up and walked away. Why? Yeah. Why? But you meet me, I hear you go for drinking. Where are you staying? Huh? Where are you staying? Sleeping? You say, yeah. Here? Yes. Well, why aren't you eating inside? Sorry. What? I'm sorry. Okay, I've got I've got some account. Okay, do you have any ID? An identification? Uh, license? What? ID. Identification. I, uh, yeah, yeah. In the room? Yeah. Okay, what's your first name? Huh? Your first name? I'm sorry. I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Okay, do you have any weapons on you? Huh? Do you have any weapons on you? No. Well, you know what that is. Turn around. Let me look. No. Turn around. No. Turn around. Bye. No. Don't walk no, away from me. No, no, sorry, sorry. Don't pull away from me. I'm checking you for what? Get your hands away from your... No, no, Stop. no, no. Stop. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Huh? See? See? Huh? Please, I'm going to go to the house. No. Okay, I'm going to go to the house. Okay, I'm going to go to the house. Hey, George, you got some water? Water? Water. 
after seven months of incarceration, an autopsy revealed that Deputy Kunovich died of natural causes, possibly exacerbated by physical exertion and emotional stress during Mendes's apprehension. The prosecutor seemed to overlook the deputy's pre-existing health issues, blaming Mendes instead. Despite the encounter's non-consensual nature, Mendes faced a manslaughter charge. During a bond hearing attended by the sheriff and deputies, Mendes, appearing catatonic, had a motion filed by his attorney asserting his incompetence to stand trial. Psychologists' evaluations yielded conflicting results, raising questions about Mendez's ability to undergo trial. Despite the possibility of immigration issues, the judge postponed the bond hearing, and further case details remain undisclosed. In September 2023, Trey and his 14-year-old daughter visited the Canadian County Sheriff's Office to collect a records request. While waiting, several deputies entered to execute an arrest warrant for the woman in line before Trey. Allegedly, the deputies treated the woman poorly, escalating the situation. Trey, disturbed by their behavior, asked a deputy to be nice. Although there's no audio from CCTV footage, it seems clear that Trey uttered these words. The deputy responded by threatening Trey with arrest if he spoke again, to which Trey reportedly replied, you can't arrest me for speech, I said be nice. Subsequently, the deputy forcefully grabbed Trey, slamming him into the wall and chairs, seemingly with the intent to harm rather than just arrest. The way they were speaking to her was like she was less than human, like she was dirt. And it really started to irritate me, it burned me up. And they, they started walking her out of the room and they started chewing on her boyfriend. I just said kind of gently to the deputy closest to me, be, I said, be nice. I didn't get any kind of permanent injury. I got a nice little scuff that I could take a picture on my shoulder and show that he actually, I didn't know if I was going to get the video or not. They strip you down and they make you squat and they look in your rectum and every, I mean, it's just a really humiliating experience. Absent a, absent a threat, which I didn't make, I never made a threat. If I had said your mama's a hoe or what have you, you know, no, nothing that I could have said should have uh, provoked that reaction from law enforcement. They, they should have taken it in stride. They won't charge me um, because if they charge me, they're going to have to show the probable cause affidavit. And from what I've heard, another deputy actually read the probable cause affidavit in front of me. He wouldn't let me look at it, but he read it. And he said, that's not the story you're telling. It's different. So they don't, they don't want this to be shown. It's difficult to know when to stand up, but sometimes you, especially when you absolutely know that you're right, it, you know, there's that tree of liberty being watered kind of thing. Law enforcement have to earn our respect by um, being accountable when they do things wrong, you know, and they have to accept accountability. They conducted their investigation. They submitted their information to the district attorney's office who found that my officers did nothing illegal or wrong. Well, that's not what I'm saying. That's what the district attorney said. In the state of Oklahoma, anytime a law enforcement officer gives you a, a verbal command, uh, whether it's to leave, get in your car, uh, or even come help me take make an arrest with somebody, I need your help. If you don't follow those orders, those you could be arrested for all of that. No reason that any, any person that has that little self-control should be in a position of law enforcement. They shouldn't be carrying, they shouldn't have the power of arrest over people. Sheriff Chris West insists a judge approved the probable cause for Trey's arrest. Despite no formal charges, Trey spent the night in jail, forced to sleep on the floor. To add insult to injury, when Trey filed a complaint, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation found no wrongdoing by the officers. The district attorney's office concurred, claiming the officers did nothing illegal. The video plainly shows the deputy violating Trey's First Amendment rights, committing battery, assault, unlawful detainment, and excessive force. The sheriff defends this unacceptable behavior, reinforcing the deputy's misguided beliefs. Trey plans to file a lawsuit soon. On March 13, 2018, Officer Kyle Erickson and his partner pulled over Jason Serrano and his friend for a supposed broken taillight. The situation escalated when the officers claimed to smell marijuana in the car, providing them with probable cause to search it. The car smells like marijuana, so we're going to check it, all right? Okay, and then what? Then that's it. Then I got to make sure everything's good with your end. Just get the taillight fixed. If there's nothing in the car, you'll be good to go. Right. While civilians typically have the right to refuse a search, probable cause allows law enforcement to proceed without consent or a warrant. 
Check the car, so I need you to hop out. Alright, I'm getting up. Okay. Relax. Hang on with me. I don't have nothing in my jacket. I'm not. Okay, like, well, he's gonna check it. I don't have nothing no, in my no, no, relax. No, I don't need to. This situation is about to escalate for no reason. No, because I don't no, I didn't do nothing. It was in the car. No, this is yeah, on me. It's my possession. Body cam footage reveals Jason on the ground, handcuffed and visibly in pain after a takedown, raising concerns about potential excessive force. All right, I'm searching the rest of the car. Actually, I'll let you check. Yeah, there's that flashlight. I'll stay with him. The officers, aware of the consequences if their search yields nothing, face allegations of unlawfully detaining a civilian and using unjustified force. Beyond race, they are now trying to cover up a violent mistake and protect their jobs. Failing to find evidence during the search, the officers became agitated. In a troubling turn, the detective, without concealing it from his camera, places a small bottle of marijuana in the cup holder, an area already checked. Do not. Sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a little bit of weed. The casual manner implies confidence in avoiding consequences and suggests such actions might be common. With the planted evidence, the officers claim a case against Jason, citing the alleged smell of marijuana, Jason's perceived combativeness, and the planted evidence to charge him. This body cam footage emerged over two years later and led to the dismissal of Jason's charges, but no charges were brought against the officers, prompting concerns about undisclosed incidents captured on body cameras. In West Covina, an officer pulled over Eileen Aquino and her husband, for driving a car without license plates. Aquino's husband began recording, refusing orders to put the phone down. I'm gonna hold my phone because I have my rights. My mom worked for the sheriff's department. Well, She's still working, so I don't mom, care. You guys phone. have made a bad name yeah. for yourself. I'm not putting the phone down. The phone. I'm not putting the yeah. phone down. I am gonna get out of the car, so please don't shoot. I am in control of the situation. Do you understand that? I'm going to tell you when to get out of the car. Okay, so I'm and not right going to get out of the I'm car. I'm telling you to put that phone I'm not the putting the phone down. The police officer eventually reached in, grabbed the phone, and stopped the recording. Aquino posted this on social media, accusing the officer of violating their rights, which was evident from the recording. She made an allegation that the male uh, driver was either struck or beat outside of the car and that her dress had come up and exposed her. Subsequently, the officer pulled them out of the car, conducted a pat-down on Aquino's husband, handcuffed him, and also handcuffed Aquino. The officers claimed they did so out of concern that the phone could be a weapon, citing reasonable caution due to Aquino's husband's history of legal issues and past arrests. We've taught these officers that cell phones can be weapons. They could be st they could be this wasn't just a regular traffic stop. This was a driver who uh, West Covina Police Department has arrested for possession of a loaded firearm. He is a convicted felon. He's been convicted twice of battery on police officers. There may be some training points out of, out of this. A person's conduct um, res delays or, or resists or obstructs that officer, it becomes criminal. It becomes a violation of the penal code. Following the incident, Aquino filed a complaint, and the police are conducting further investigations into the matter. A man was standing in front of his house, waiting for his friend to pick him up when an officer from the Chicago Police Department approached him and asked him to walk, claiming he couldn't stand there. As the man failed to comply, the officer resorted to violence and pulled out his weapon. My friend's picking me up. My friend's picking me up. I'm waiting for a ride. What's the issue? I'm waiting for a ride. Walk. I'm waiting for a ride. Who's your ride? Who's your ride? My friend. Who's your friend's name? My friend Zozo. He's What's coming to pick me up. What car's he coming? I said go! That's none of your business. I don't have to answer that. Yeah? Nope. You just lied to me told me you were waiting for an Uber. I don't have to tell you where I'm going. You're not you my father. You lied to me. You're not my father. You I don't lied have to tell to you me. where I'm going. Yeah. I don't have to tell you where I'm going. You don't have to tell me, but you lied to me. I don't have to tell you where I'm going. So guess what? I'm going to wait here for your Uber to come. No, you're not. Are you getting in my face, man? He's harassing me. What's your name? Right there. You got it? Yep, I got it. Get down! Get down! Really, bro? Really, bro? Really, bro? Get down! I ain't got no on me, bro. Get down. I ain't got no on me, bro. Get down. Really, bro? $14.99. Really, bro? Get down. Really, bro? In front of my house. Look, this is my house. I'm at my house. In front of my house. This is my house. Look, I'm right. I'm right in front of my house. He pulled up on me on bush. It's perplexing that such a dramatic situation unfolded simply because the man was standing in front of his own house. 
In a concerning incident, two California police officers went beyond ethical boundaries when they essentially kidnapped a man, Jamal Williams, who was innocently having lunch in his own car. Despite Jamal correctly asserting his right to remain silent and requesting a lawyer, the police opted to detain him, claiming he matched the description of a suspect. Notably, the only description they had was of a black male in his early 20s wearing all black, possibly with a red t-shirt underneath. However, Jamal, 40 years old, was dressed in a red hoodie and gray sweatpants. Sir, step on out, dude. You're, Sir. you're on camera, dude, so don't do anything dumb, okay? Step Hold on, on dude. I'm, I'm gonna get the uh, camera. Go right, ahead, look. you can record. Step out of the car, please. He's being aggressive. Hey, you, you, hey, stop hey, resisting, you, you, dude. Stop resisting. I'm just, well, why, why, why are you, what, no, man. Okay. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. Jamal's encounter with the police took a troubling turn despite him initially showing no signs of aggression or resistance. He was attempting to open his phone to record the interaction for his own safety. Despite Jamal willingly stepping out of the car, the police officer quickly labeled him as aggressive. This frustrated Jamal, who then tried to stay inside the vehicle. However, the officers responded with unwarranted force. One officer even pulled out a taser, threatening Jamal, who posed no actual threat. Subsequently, Jamal was handcuffed and kept face down on the pavement while additional patrol vehicles arrived at the scene. If we take these off, are you gonna cause a problem? Are you gonna kick any windows out, anything like that? I don't answer questions. Leave them on, then. That's fine. That's fine. Which one do you want to put him up and get him to a car? Just leave him here until fire season real quick. Make it easy. He doesn't. He doesn't want to walk. He doesn't want to answer questions. And we'll just leave him. There. All right. Cool. Is your first name Jamal? That's who the car is. Right now. I don't give you consent to go on my car and check my car. Close it. I don't give you consent to check my car. You're violating my Fourth Amendment constitutional right. So I think we should. Alright, at least get in the back seat. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what's your name again? Why are you guys kidnapping? I can't talk to you until you help me out. Tell me, why am I being kidnapped? Well, same with you, we'll figure that out. I'll let you know. Okay? Uh, find a car and put it in there. Okay, we'll talk when you get there. Despite being cleared of any suspicion, Jamal remained fully restrained with both handcuffs and leg wraps. Jamal was then charged with a felony count of resisting arrest and taken to jail. Jamal lodged a formal complaint with the LA Sheriff's Department, but the department's self-investigation found no evidence of wrongdoing by the officers. Subsequently, Jamal pursued a civil rights lawsuit against the arresting officers. However, the investigation into the incident maintained a narrative that portrayed Jamal as the one escalating the situation, ultimately resulting in dropped charges against him, but no charges brought against the officers involved. On January 27, 2020, Taryn Black was pulled over by Officer Noah Defor from the Pensacola Police for not wearing a seatbelt. The officer tried to instruct Taryn to pull over using the speaker intercom, but Taran continued driving for another minute. Commit work. Do you have any objection to me searching you right now, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. You do? Yeah. Okay, do you have any identification on you? Um, he's in my car. Okay, I'm Officer Defor of the Pensacola Police Department. Yes, sir. The reason I'm stopping you today is because your seatbelt is off. Okay. okay. I gave you multiple chances to stop your vehicle, all right? Well, I was trying to get to a place that I felt comfortable. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Because I'm, I'm at work right now. This is your vehicle? Yes, sir. And I'm at work right now. You're at work? Yes, sir. Okay. I got my badge on and everything. Okay. All right. For my safety and yours, I'm going to pat you down just to make sure you don't have any weapons on you, okay? That's right. Yeah. I was just stopping, waiting until I got to a place where I feel comfortable. I'm at, I'm at work right now. I'm getting ready to go see a client right now. Who? Me. I'm You're... at work right now. You're at work right now? Yeah. I'm a counselor. You're a counselor? Yeah. But who's your, do you have a client nearby or what's going yeah. on? Yeah. I think that's part of the closing unit. Okay. Before we ask any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Yeah. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask any questions and to have him with you during questioning. Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you wish. Decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you'll still have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Officer DeFore confronts Taran, and tensions escalate as Taran questions the validity of the stop. The situation takes a troubling turn when Officer DeFore tries to detain Taran. What unfolds is a shocking sequence of events. You cool talking to me? Yeah. Okay. 
So you have no ID on you right now? Yeah, it's in my car. It's, it's in your car? car. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have I got any... my, uh, work, my work ID on me. Do you have any objection to me searching your vehicle right now? Oh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Why? Because, for one, um, there's no smell of marijuana or alcohol. That's, I'm number not, one. I'd number never two, mentioned any drugs right. or anything Number like two, that. Um, I think, you know, the stop is based on... I don't even know why you stopped me right now. I, I explained my stop to you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, I object to the search. I mean, I'm at, I'm at work. You know, I was leaving Walgreens and I'm headed to see a client do a session. I'm, I'm okay. A why? Why did you? Why did you flee from me? I didn't flee. You never I, stopped. I, I, I was you waiting until I got to a place where I felt comfortable. You never stopped. So that's the only thing that I'm saying. I, I didn't flee. I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally at work right now. Like I. I you could have stopped at any moment. I got my work badge on me and everything at work right now. Yeah. That gives you no excuse to stop when I'm trying to pull you no, over. I, what to I, not stop. What I was saying is I wasn't fleeing. I was just waiting to. That's I got fleeing to from point. law enforcement. I did not increase my speed. That is my fleeing speed. from law enforcement. I did not increase my speed, officer. That okay. does not matter. The only thing that I'm saying is this. I was not fleeing. I'm, in, I'm literally at work. I left the moment Walmart. that I initiated my lights and sirens, and told you to stop, you're required to stop for law the, enforcement. The only thing I'm saying also okay. is this. I did not flee. I was waiting till I got to a point where I felt comfortable to stop. Literally have no... I need your license, your registration, your insurance. Do I have okay. permission to enter your vehicle and grab those items? Can, can I get it? No, sir. You're detained right now. You okay. fled from law enforcement. I, I did not. I'm literally at You work. fled from law enforcement. I, I'm not going to argue with you yeah. about that anymore. Can you grab your license, registration, and proof of insurance? Yes, sir. Yes, Where is it at? Oh, um, I got it in, in, in my front seat. Just in your front seat? No, I got my license in my wallet, okay. and then I got my, um, the rest of it is in my uh, glove department. Okay. I can grab it. Can he go grab it? Can I go grab it? No, ma'am. Ultimately, Officer Noah DeFore faced significant consequences for his actions on that day. He not only lost his job as a police officer, but also found himself arrested due to the excessive use of force during the traffic stop. In response, Taryn Black initiated legal proceedings against the Pensacola Police Department, formally indicating his intention to sue. His claim sought $200,000 in damages, citing emotional distress and injuries sustained during the troubling incident an officer confronted an individual named Josh, allegedly due to him displaying the middle finger and using profanity. However, upon reviewing footage from a neighbor's video camera and the officer's body cam, there is no evidence of Officer Malta mentioning profanity, nor does it show Josh using it. Even if such language was used, it is protected as free speech and cannot be a valid reason to pull somebody over. What'd you pull me over for? For your threats that you made to one of our officers. That's you know, not a threat. You need a reason to pull me over. I just gave you that. For what threat? I didn't make any threat okay. to any officer. I haven't. Un no, I am not. Because okay. I did not break the law. Okay. Flipping okay. an okay. officer okay. off okay. is not a crime. Hop out or I'm going to break your window. Driver's license, get out. I will. Here's my, here's my thing. Several months after the incident, Officer Malta was terminated from the Wright City Police Department. In October 2023, a settlement offer was discussed, and the mayor was authorized to sign on behalf of the board. The city agreed to settle with Josh for $100,000. On June 24, 2019, Mark Domino, a 52-year-old motorcyclist, set out for his daily commute to work. Mark's wife had driven their car to the same retail store in Clarkson, parking it on the opposite end of the lot. After completing his shift, Mark decided to check on their vehicle before leaving on his motorcycle for the journey home. It was during this routine inspection that a concerned citizen named Jod Burnell noticed Mark and made a call to the authorities, triggering a series of events. Happy. How's it going, man? I'm Officer Lores, Clarkson Police Department. You put your phone down for a second. What do you got in your pocket there? Is that just something hanging off your backpack? What is that, a hanger? What are you doing with that? Is this your bike? It's your bike? You got ID on you? Why do you need my ID? Because somebody saw you looking at cars, so I'm here just checking to see what's going on. You got ID on you? Yeah, I do, but okay, do I'll take. Yeah, I'm figuring that out right now. I'll take a look at your ID, though. You don't need my ID unless I did something. Okay. Unless you're taking me in for something like that. Turn around and put your hands behind your back for right what? now. For now! What? For what? Turn for around and put your hands behind your back. For now! What? For what? Before we get started, 108, pick it up. You're gonna, you're gonna obey me, or you're Why gonna go on the ground. Why do you obey you? 
because I'm giving you a lawful order. For what? Turn around and put did your I hands behind anything? your back. Did I do anything? Yes. Turn what around and put your hands behind your back. What did I do? Do you want to get tased? Do, excuse me? Turn around and put For your hands. For what? Hand. Do you know I work here? Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Do you know I work here? This is my bike. Okay. So what did I do for you to approach me and then tell me that put my hands behind my back? Sir. What are you arresting me for? I'm not arresting you. Right now you're not co uh, cooperating with for me. For what? And you're getting agitated. You asked me for, no, you asked me for my ID. Right. I don't have to give you my ID. Okay. Unless then. I've done something. What have I done? Turn around and put your hands behind your back. For what? Are you arresting me? And for I'm, what purpose? I'm detaining what? you. Detain me for what? Why are you a you're not, me? You're not even listening. What did I do for you to detain me? Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Was there a report that I stole something? Yes. There was a report that I stole something. Turn around. You just said, hold on. Stop, Dick, stop. Officer Lewis not only neglects to try to de-escalate the situation, but he also accuses Mark of stealing and instructs him to comply. Domino resists as the officer reaches for his hands, resulting in multiple taser discharges before ultimately placing him in handcuffs. I can stop. get my phone out. Stop. Wait stop. a minute, why are you putting stop. your hands on me? Stop. stop. Roll over. He's a over. pal suspect. Is he? Yes. Stop resisting, you're gonna go, or you're gonna I'm get working. tased again. Get on your stomach. Oh, I you work. You just got to work. I just got to work. My right. Why are you? Just stop down. resisting. Just wait for the other guys to get here. Other units, pick it up. Lowers one nineteen. Male that came to this bike, everything that he did, he's an employee. We've got uh, a witness that saw him going into cars, and we just fought and tased him. So that, bike right there. Uh, that bike, male come to it. Where did he walk? Which he, cars? The car that he got into is clear on the other end. Okay. So walked. you saw one male walking from all the way over there. Clear over to here. And it's, that's I, the male that we talked to. Yeah, I watched him. Okay. He got into three doors of that car. And then he just walked okay. away and came clear over here. Okay. So I thought, well, that's not right. Okay. But okay. the woman came Can over. Can you and start looking at that for me? Yeah. The woman you. came over and was okay. kind of pissed, saying it was this oh, no, car registered with him. But you, you say it's your car. 19's on scene with the RP. So, so what did he say when you? How many? He wouldn't say anything to me. How many cars did he look at? Just the one. Baby. Just the one. So like, one car far. Like my pickup would a be gray Chevy Aveo is registered to him, the same as the bike. Okay, he could have... Domino was arrested and charged with resisting arrest and obstructing a law enforcement officer, but he was released a few hours later. In November 2019, Domino filed a significant $5 million tort claim against the city of Clarkson. In 2020, the city dismissed all criminal charges against Mark Domino and agreed to pay him $25,000 to resolve the case. On June 20, 2023, a Henry County police officer pulled over a Dodge Charger, clocked at 96 miles per hour in a 35 MAFRAR zone, driven by Henry County Sheriff Chief Deputy Michael Yarbrough. The officer, recognizing Yarbrough, questioned whether to issue a ticket during a phone call seeking guidance. The decision was left to the officer's discretion. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello? Guess who I just pulled over? Who? Yarborough. Really? Yeah, the chief deputy driving a Dodge Charger, a souped up Dodge Charger that belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this at 96 in a 35. What was the issue? I mean, why is he speeding? No, no reason. He's in an unmarked. Car. He just got a high horsepower car and decided he wanted to play. It's your traffic stop. You do what you think you should do. I mean, I, I'm not telling you one way or the other. You do a 96 and a 35. Okay. Well, you know I don't care for him, so I'm going to ride his <laughs> Sir, here's your ID back. This is your copy of the citation. 
Yeah, if you would sign right here. It's got a court date, time it's a must appear. Yes, sir. Please slow down and have a safe day. Yes, sir. Despite the absence of a $200 fine for super speeders, the officer handed Yarbrough a citation, noting a court appearance requirement. In response, Henry County Sheriff Reginald Scandrit stated that Chief Deputy Yarbrough immediately reported the citation and was subsequently suspended for 40 hours without pay due to the severity of the traffic violation. Yarbrough, on duty at the time, did not activate lights or sirens during the incident. A Vandergriff police officer confronted Marcus Townsend, a black male, at a local restaurant without providing a reason. Townsend, who believes he was racially profiled, filmed the interaction, which gained traction on social media, sparking criticism and accusations of racial discrimination. Well, because I got called here for you. For what? What did I do? Do you have any ID on you? No, I don't have to give you no, ID, No, you do sir. have to. For what, sir? What did I do, sir? You do. What did I do, sir? Yeah, send me another unit. The officer approached Townsend with questions about his girlfriend's service dog. Attempting to de-escalate, Townsend sent the dog home, but the situation escalated when the officer became aggressive. He just came in, just had a problem with the dog at first. He didn't want the dog in there. He wanted to see service papers, and we didn't. We don't carry service papers, you know. It's just not not necessary. Whenever the dog went home, that's whenever I pulled my phone out because he started talking about. Well, you know, I, I'm over here, you know, you were smoking dope outside the, the restaurant. I was like, no, I wasn't smoking. You know, I just came in here to eat. What did I do, sir? You do. What did I do, sir? Townsend provided his ID, but the officer ordered him off the property, claiming the manager didn't want him there. I'm Get asking, up and go outside. I'm asking you what crime Get up I and go outside. Sir, I'm asking you what I got called here for you, and I'm asking your identification. Sir, what Get did up you and go do? outside. What was the when I got outside, uh, he sat me down, basically wanted to run a criminal background, wanted to see if I had warrants. I don't think it would have been the same if I was white, if I, was, if I didn't have a dreadlocks tattoo. When Townsend returned later, the manager welcomed him, highlighting the unnecessary drama and alleged racial profiling by the officer. Kevin, accompanied by his newly pregnant wife on the way to Jackson West Medical Center after a recent car accident, encountered a delay at the hospital entrance. Security footage reveals that two Miami-Dade police cruisers engaged in a conversation, blocking access to the emergency room. After waiting for about 20 seconds, Kevin honked his horn to alert the officers. One officer gestured and moved while the other, Officer Daniels, approached Kevin, demanding his driver's license. Let me have your driving license, sir. No. I asked you several times, let me have you your driving license. You can ask all you want, that's in the command. All right. What, what is your, what, what, what is her, what is her, uh, her ailment? What, what is she? Was she in the car what, accident. What's the, what, okay. She's going to be seen by her, do by her okay. doctor okay. at the emergency room to make sure the baby is okay. The officer called for rescue, and after some time, fire rescue arrived on the scene just outside the emergency room they were heading to. The medics only checked her blood pressure, offering limited insights into the condition of her baby. It is surprising that the rescue team didn't accompany her into the ER, leaving the patient with a police officer without apparent medical training. Cleared your wife, okay? Hey, your wife is cleared, Start okay? Recording. Check my blood pressure, but I know that she's sick. I don't understand. Check. Get your, your phone out. Your wife is clear. She's okay. All right. So there's no need to blow your horn at us and get and start going off on me and my my partner. You understand? The conduct of Officer Daniels in this encounter raises questions about his suitability for the role of a law enforcement officer. The incident could intensify the distress of Kevin's family, given the sensitive situation involving a potential miscarriage, and all of this unfolded due to Kevin legally honking his horn for attention. The department asserts that an investigation has been initiated into the officers, but has not provided any further details. Erica Prince Simmons got nabbed for suspected trespassing while recording police action on her phone during a bar altercation. Even though they dropped the charges later, she wasn't letting it slide. She threw a lawsuit at the city and county, claiming they violated her First Amendment rights. Okay, you want her to have your phone or you want to keep it? I would love to keep it. Okay, she wants to keep it. 
In the settlement, she ended up pocketing more than $57,000. That's one way to turn the tables, huh? In a surprising turn of events, captured on their own dash cam in March 2022, police officers encountered a man named Jonathan holding up a sign warning drivers of an upcoming speed trap. Instead of appreciating the gesture, the officers took offense at the sign and confronted Jonathan. Nothing. Go else she does I'm gonna do it right here you're where I'm at. So I'm not. I have drivers coming up to me telling me that you're jumping out in traffic. Because apparently they're erroneous. I don't give a what somebody else says. What did you witness? Nothing of the sort. So keep your to yourself, pal. Traffic fines constitute a significant portion of the police department's budget, and these Delaware cops seemed unwilling to let Jonathan hinder that crucial source of income. Despite the claims that he was obstructing traffic, Jonathan steadfastly denies any wrongdoing and stands his ground. One of the officers then confiscates Jonathan's sign, raising concerns about the potential violation of the citizen's right to express himself. Don't put your hands on me. Do not give me my property back, you piece of give me my property back. You see this, you tyrant piece of what are your badge numbers? Step back, okay? No, Don't walk up no, you like stole that. my property. Did you see anything in my hands? You I stole piece your property. Of Have a nice day. Jonathan lets the officers know he's coming back with a new sign real soon. While driving off, he throws an insulting hand gesture their way, and no surprise, they decide to pull him over for it. And I'm gonna take you to court. Well, here's what I'm saying, take it to court. That's what I want you to do. That's license, what I want you, I want you to take it to court. So let, but license, before we go license. any farther, you're pulling me over for what? Because you had, your, conduct. you had your finger this out. This only conduct now, what? Here's what's about to happen. You're about to be arrested again for resisting arrest. No, I'm not resisting yes, anything. Well, yeah, yeah. Right no. now you're right now you're you're being detained. For okay? what? You're being detained. I told you for, why I stopped you already, sir. For putting my middle finger up. That's yeah, correct. No, correct. No, exactly. For, correct. Right. You extended correct. your arm out the window. No, no I have my yes, middle finger did. out the window. Okay, so, let's get your let me get your ID. Okay, you had your middle finger out the window. What adds to the shock factor in this case? is the determination of these two cops to throw him behind bars no matter what it took, and all of it was caught on their own dash cam. Right. Yeah, stuff like that that'll fly, unfortunately, I mean, yeah. you, you can't, you, we, we can't pull people over, we can't write a ticket for telling them to fuck off, or right. giving us a middle finger, or stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, that's, that's their right to do so. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, all right, I'll do some more work up on this guy, and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass it on. And then number two, yeah, he, you know, we have no real basis. Yeah. So it, 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 he's, right. he's going to do something stupid one day where we are going to be able to lock him up for disorderly conduct or, yeah. and, and, and I just wish we had the witness and, and even had it on video. Their supervisor informs them that the charges will be dropped eventually. In the end, Jonathan took legal action against the officers, alleging a violation of his constitutional rights for hindering him from alerting motorists about a speed trap in September 2023. He emerged victorious in the case and was granted a settlement sum of $50,000. In Tamarack, Florida, during a routine city council ceremony honoring deputy sheriffs, Joshua Gallardo stands out as the deputy of the month. In the group photo, Gallardo proudly holds his certificate, but things take an unexpected turn. City Commissioner Mike Gillen grabs the mic and calls Deputy Joshua Gallardo back, leaving Gallardo completely blindsided as he makes his way down for a second round. Joshua Gallardo? My, my line. Can you come down for a second? You probably don't remember me, but you're the police officer who falsely arrested me four years ago. You lied on the police report. I believe you're a rogue police officer, you're a bad police officer, and you don't deserve to be here. The commissioner and the cop, Joshua Gallardo, initially crossed paths in 2015 during a police call to break up a fight. The commissioner, not yet elected at that time, was filming the incident and ended up charged with resisting arrest. The charges got dropped when video evidence proved he had done nothing wrong. Reflecting on the incident, the commissioner admits he could have handled things differently, stating, I was profoundly affected by my wrongful arrest. I had a flashback, and a flood of emotions came to me at the meeting, so I spoke up. Around 1 a.m. on July 28th, a taxi driver calls the police, after a man starts banging on his window, urgently asking for help. The man, later revealed to be Ohio Police Chief Chad McArdle, asserts he was by a group of people. However, when the police show up, his story takes a drastic turn. Guys, oh, and, and they drove me south.
Right here, he hit me probably three or four times. I just or, and then he got me right here. Do you have any idea who it is? You were in a Spanish. car? They pulled me in the car. They pulled you into the car. Here's, here's what f***ed up, dude. I'm a cop. I don't know what your guys' problem is, but... For some reason, Chad chose to start getting a bit passive-aggressive with the cops. Even though they hadn't given him any trouble, it's evident that something's bothering him, and it's certainly not the four stab wounds he claims to have. Fortunately, it doesn't take long for him to spill the beans and reveal the real story. They took me to the alley, they started keeping the face, I, I grabbed a stick and started <laughs> I'm pretty sure I one of them. You think you one of them? Yeah. He like came up and kicked me in the face. I was like, alright, let's go. I broke the branch off and started just stabbing. I don't want dude to be dead, but don't around with me. What began as a routine call has escalated into a seriously complicated situation that's proving to be quite a challenge to unravel. The only witness in the mix is also the main suspect. And on top of that, they've got a group of people involved and a deceased body to locate. This one's shaping up to be a tough nut to crack, or at least, it was until they stumbled upon something crucial in the alley where it all went down. Come out here. What's your name? Joey. Joey, did you hear any commotion going on? Like a fight or something that's broke out? Yeah. Come out here for me, so I can see you. I was just hiding Not from him. You were hiding from him? Yeah. So what did you hear? I was standing right there, and he kicked me in the back out of the blue. Kicked you? Yeah. Did you do anything to him when he kicked you? No. No? I, I hit the ground. Matter of fact, my back is hurt. So when he came up and attacked you, did he say anything? He said I'm a you. Chad's in a tight spot. On the upside, nobody's lost their life, so he might dodge a murder charge. However, it seems he's just assaulted a homeless guy without any apparent reason. Now, it's in the hands of the cops to figure out the next steps. Any description of all these people? It says he's multiple times, has absolutely zero wounds on him whatsoever. All we can corroborate is that he beat this poor guy up in an alley for no reason. So, who wants to press charges? Put your hands on your back. We're going to detain you right now. Cool. We'll hold another investigation. Not good. Am I being charged with something? Well, right now, you are, you are detained. So. I think I'm. It appears that despite his years of police experience, Chad hasn't quite learned the art of staying silent. If he keeps going, he might talk himself into a murder charge. Presently, Chad is facing one count of misdemeanor battery and has been put on paid administrative leave from his role back in Ohio. The maximum penalty he's looking at is one year in jail and a $1,000 fine. On January 14, 2021, a resident of Harnett County, North Carolina, reported her dirt bike as stolen. What unfolded next was a chain of events that left an innocent 14-year-old treated like a common criminal. 16 days after the dirt bike was reported missing, it surfaced on Facebook Marketplace. The owner, spotting it, arranged to meet the seller to expose them. Little did they know, the seller was Malcolm, a 14-year-old who genuinely believed he had a legitimate deal on his hands. They agreed to a transaction and claimed they needed to hit an ATM for cash, but in reality, they were dialing 911. Malcolm, unaware that the dirt bike he bought was stolen, was in for a shock. His passion for fixing and selling bikes turned into an unexpected encounter with handcuffs. Well, I'm gonna work on getting you out of there soon, okay? Just keep cooperating with me, I appreciate it. And we'll, we'll get everything squared away. Stole before. I don't, okay. I mean, and, and sir? I'm trying to find this bill, so I have sir, a lot of and, and I'm not saying that you stole it. Right now, what we've got is we just got a stolen motor vehicle. Um, we're not saying that you stole the vehicle. Okay, I'm not saying that at all, okay? Yes, but it, it still is a crime to be in possession of a stolen motor vehicle. The officer asserts that being in possession of a stolen vehicle is illegal, which is generally true. However, the key distinction lies in the suspect's knowledge. If an individual knowingly buys or owns a stolen item, it constitutes a crime. In Malcolm's case, since he was unaware of the bike's stolen status, he was entirely innocent, making this arrest potentially unlawful. I can and tell you, I can show you, if you can go on, I can, you can go on my phone, I can show you exactly what I bought Okay, from. okay. We met at the Lillington Presbyterian Church. Okay. If you know what that is. Okay. Lillington Presbyterian Church. Well, your dad's coming over here right now. It was about 8.30 when we met. Hey, how are you doing, sir? Hey, um. Dad, I need that so, bill of sale. Reason all this is going down, um, that vehicle's been entered a stolen International Crime Information Center. 
Do you have the bill of sale by any chance, sir? I, 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 I don't know what it is. It's either in my room or in the garage. You gotta tell me where it is, man. As Malcolm's father attempts to gather evidence proving his son's legal purchase of the bike, two other responding officers begin to voice their concerns over what is happening in front of their very eyes. Eventually, one of them decides to step in and intervene. He's detained, he, he's detained right now because he is... He did he's not, 14. He's 14? Yes. Okay. So I already explained to him he's detained right now. I told him that. So why is he detained? Because that's a stolen motor vehicle. Okay. So, I mean, Diggs verified the VIN number, right? Did you, is that before all that, that you verified before you? I, I detained him and then okay, we verified. Okay, that's why I asked if he was 1095 or 10. He's detained. Okay. So, obviously he's a juvenile, right? Yeah. Ain't no sense having him sit in the car 10 with handcuffs on. Wait, okay. You ain't, if he was 18 and you might be taking him to jail for possession mm -hmm. of stolen property, right. different. But we ain't, you ain't gonna take him to jail, right? It's gonna be a petition. Mm -hmm. The officer demonstrates a clear understanding of the distinction between detaining an adult and a child. After persistent urging from his colleague, the arresting officer eventually sees reason. Malcolm, upon his release, discovered the receipt for the dirt bike and no further action was taken. However, his family later held a press conference advocating for police reform. On February 9, 2023, in South Kingstown, Rhode Island, Attorney Claire Hall, playing the role of a good Samaritan, unwittingly becomes involved in a tense situation with the police after colliding with a 17-year-old in a car accident. Yeah, the key's stuck. Okay. It's broken. Are you gonna, well, so you think he's gonna be taken to the scene or, or will he just... Uh, are you... I'm right? not, no, no, I'm on the phone with this time. Yeah, it's my dad. But how, many, how many cars are involved right now? Not mine, that's fine. Right, let's, let's, we need to get that off the road. All right, can we get that into the parking lot? I'm trying to tell his father. So okay, well, tell we're him. in the middle of the highway. Yes. So, All right, right can, you, can you move your car, please? My man, is your car drivable? Yes. All right, we're going to get it off to the side I of the road, all right? All I'm saying is I can leave. I just want to tell his father. You don't have to leave. Just no, move your car. Leave. I just want you to tell me. It's Are you okay? Yeah, I'm right, okay. Let's have a seat right over here. Is that your mom? But as time goes on, tensions rise between the officers and Miss Hall. The situation takes a dramatic turn when one officer's frustration reaches a boiling point, leading to a heated confrontation. The officer raises his voice and threatens arrest as Miss Hall persists in her demand to speak with the boy's father. I'm working. Can you please go sit in your car? You have nothing to do his with this. Father, scene. I he's understand. A minor. I'm an attorney because he's a minor. I'm. You need to tell me. Is he going to be here? I don't need to tell you anything. You... I'm going to arrest you in a second if you don't get in your car. Do oh, you understand me? I'm not kidding you. You are kidding. You are impeding an investigation right now, and you're really bothering me. Which go I tell sit in your father. car. What I will talk I to him in a minute. Get in your car now. Help! Help! Take it. Wait, wait. You're in so much trouble. I can't even. I can't even tell you. Oh my God! This is the craziest thing I've ever. In my time, I'm not gonna relax. I am so I can't. I'm not him. I, I don't have to. You guys, so where do you where do you get this bunch of keys? No, this is. I need my phone. It's on the ground over there. Call my husband. He's also an attorney. Go ahead, get it. This is so bad. Yeah, I can't even. The phone is right here. Oh, surprise! After this forceful confrontation. Hall took steps by initiating a lawsuit against the South Kingston Police Department. Her legal action is directed not only at the officers involved, but also at the town manager and police chief. The allegations cover a spectrum of issues, ranging from assault and battery to violations of civil rights, including accusations of police brutality and the use of excessive force. Additionally, Hall cites intentional infliction of emotional distress in her legal claims. On May 24, 2018, Milwaukee Bucks player Sterling Brown found himself in a challenging situation with a local police officer named Grahams due to a parking violation. Officer Grahams urgently calls for backup, and within moments, a fleet of squad cars descends upon the scene. What follows is a concerning display of unwarranted aggression, unnecessary force, and intimidation tactics directed at Sterling Brown as he becomes surrounded by multiple officers who appear to be acting beyond justified measures.
After this incident, justice prevails as Mr. Brown takes legal action against the city of Milwaukee for violating his constitutional rights, leading to the termination of one officer. Additionally, eight officers faced disciplinary action, with three receiving suspensions. The city of Milwaukee further approved a substantial $400,000 settlement to resolve the matter with Mr. Brown. A Miami police officer forcefully slammed a man, Matthew, to the ground as he recorded an emergency scene outside his business. The officer was responding to a woman who had overdosed and accused Matthew of selling drugs to her. This resulted in Matthew's face hitting the pavement, causing injuries to his head. He accused me, you know, of selling um, narcotics out of our store and that we were the reason why the lady was uh, quote unquote, I guess, dead, pronounced dead in the street. It's a very big deal. It's it's it, to most people, I think it's shocking to the department. Do better, really do better and look out and watch who you have on your force. On that night, Matthew was initially arrested for disorderly conduct, only to be subsequently released. An ongoing investigation is examining this troubling incident. In the late evening of December 3rd, 2021, Officer Teddy Dyer, Officer Candace Miller, and Sergeant David Merrick of the East Ridge Police Department in Tennessee responded to a call for a well child check at the residence of Haley Sherrard. When they arrived at the home, they found Haley's mother, Ang Sherrard, along with her son, Devin, in a vehicle in front of the house. Officer Dyer approached the vehicle from the right passenger side, and the encounter that followed was captured on his body camera. Hey, what's up? Hey, do you live here? Um, my daughter's living here. Is she? In, yeah. the, in this, is that 893? Yeah, it is. All right, hang on one second for me, okay? Something wrong? Well, we got called to check on a child. What well, child? I don't know. They didn't tell us. They just said do a welfare check. From when? Like, what did they say? I don't know. We'll go up and knock. Is that your daughter coming now? Yeah. What's her name? Hey, going up to the door. Well, how old is the child? Two years old. Is there a two-year-old that lives here? Okay. I bet it was, uh... Four, my three, seven, golf four. Why are you running my tag? Because I smell marijuana. You smell marijuana? Yes. Because you smell marijuana that gives you the right to run my tag? Not only that, I'm going to search your car. You're not going to search anything. Yes, ma'am. No, you're not. I promise you. You are not going to break not my only, rights right now. You're about to get your rights up in the back of my car. Well, if that's what you want to do because you, one, you're going to get in real when you do. Because I haven't done anything. I haven't violated any rules or anything. You just sit there and talk to me and, and to that I, me. you're going to search I, my car. I am going to search your car. And you're running my tag. I am going to search your car. I'm not doing anything but sitting out here waiting for I my daughter care. to come back I don't out. care. Your car is going to be searched. And if you interfere with my search, I will put you in the car okay, and I will take you to jail. Okay, you go ahead and you violate my rights then. Okay, put Let's your hands on that. the car. You violate my rights. Put your hands on the car. Back Shut up. the f up before I take your f to jail too. Get back. She just got run run up. Baby, you do not go away. Arrest her. Girl, do not push me. What is wrong with you? Who did it? I need to know who did it. Who did what? Who tased my She didn't up? get tased. Did tased. Then why was her taser going off over there? Checking the fire, I guess. So then why was there a taser? How about you worry about you? That's we'll worry about, about your mama. mama. I don't really give a Y'all are so, violating our rights right now. What, which one? You want to act like a big girl? You're going to get treated no, like a big girl. So I drive stunned her mom to get her in the car. Uh, other than that, she's perfectly fine. Just drive stunned? I'm just making sure. Yeah, no, she, just drive stunned. I, I, but I did it twice. I'm emotionally invested. Can I take her? Yes. Well, we're, 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 we were thinking. No. I love it. When you do this. <laughs> Going to the hospital, I'm gonna you, come. I'm talking. I'm I'm telling you what's gonna happen. Okay. You are very rude. Taking mom for disorderly yeah. conduct, resistance, stop hot frisk. They are now. It can just the car can just stay here. I mean, I'm we'll her see. daughter. I, and I please see. don't like. It's already like. Please don't, because like I let's want to out of jail, and I just want a baby. Uh, and I'm and I feel for you, and I'm not trying to cause you no headache. You just got to understand, we have a job to do. Also, step out. Let's talk. How old are you, man? I'm 18, sir. 18. Mm -hmm. And I'm a man. And like you, why you gotta hit my mama like that, bro? You gonna keep the? All uh, right, I tried. I tried. You see, I tried to I'm talk to you like a man. I tried to talk. Why you gotta do her like that, bro? Get in the car. Like, I tried. I tried to talk to you. I tried. I tried. I'm not your bro. You see, I tried. You okay. see, I tried to talk to him. How old is he? 18. He's old enough to take a ride. He goes to the big boy jail. Listen, I want you to know how this would have went. 
Ma'am, I'm gonna have to search your car. Okay, I didn't find anything. Guess what? Have a good night. After the arrest of Miss Sherrard, a thorough search of her vehicle yielded no illicit substances. Following this, she was taken to the hospital by EMS, where she underwent medical clearance. Subsequently, she faced charges of disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. On April 19th, 2022, all charges against Angel were dismissed by the state of Tennessee. Moving forward, on July 12, 2022, Angel Devon, along with her minor daughter, initiated legal proceedings in state court. The case was later shifted to federal court on August 11, 2022. Notably, Miss Sherrard's minor daughter received a settlement of $10,000, with $4,000 of that sum being paid to her attorney. The Fort Worth Police Department terminated Officer Mitchell Miller following an investigation that uncovered his dishonesty about employing excessive force during an arrest. Miller arrested an individual for public intoxication, and as they approached the jail entrance, the arrested person turned towards Miller. In response, Miller forcefully pushed him to the ground, causing the victim to lose consciousness upon impact with the concrete. Miller failed to report the incident and later denied using force. The case has been forwarded to the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office for review. In June of 2022, Hendry and Ty visited the Lake County Government Complex in Indiana to observe the facilities and gain insight into how state and federal tax dollars are utilized. The complex encompasses various offices, including the Sheriff's Department, Treasurer's Office, County Clerk, Superior Court, a correctional facility, and an animal control and adoption center. There are both public-use parking lots and gated lots with warnings about potential towing for vehicles without permits. Despite Google Maps having driven through some lots, Hendry and Ty explored the grounds. The entrance they used had no posted notices prohibiting entry, and the signs they encountered suggested public welcome for court visits or animal adoptions. They even observed amenities like a doggy bag dispenser for those using the public grassy area. Around two minutes after their arrival, an employee approached them to inquire about their activities. Continuing their recording as the shift changed and public servants arrived, no one questioned Henry and Ty's presence for about 10 minutes. However, trouble ensued when two deputies approached and one immediately handcuffed Henry, claiming trespassing. There's somebody beating on a window up there, I think. They're beating the window. Did you hear that? I heard that, yeah. I think this is probably... Hear it? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta have that. Or what? We're just recording? Recording what? Just what we can see from public? We're doing it on purpose. You gotta ask me to leave before you can trash pass me. Yeah, we I'm not trash pass you. Ask what are you doing while you're videotaping our parking lot? I'm in handcuffs. Right. I don't know what you're doing here. You're making sure that you're not doing what you're doing. Right now you're videotaping. Just everything we can see from public. Why? That's why you're doing you need to come over here. here. He's he's uh he turned my camera off. I think he's uh, gonna okay. do stuff to me. We're we're exercising lot. our First Amendment right. You can't be this parking lot. It, there's no signs that say that, so we didn't know. Nobody asked us to leave. What do you? Okay, well I'm asking you now to leave. This, this, well, I can this. leave, but I'm in handcuffs. After you're done with this, you're gonna be leaving. Yes, this this, this right is now. not a this is not a public lot. Well, there's no sign saying that, so I didn't know that. Yes, you did. You knew. It. You were what going you through every, You were going through everyone's cars, recording stuff. There, don't move. You're this is battery, guys. All right, if you're a supervisor, I'd suggest that you stop him. They were looking through everyone's cars recording. That's things. not a good It's called the plain plates. view doctrine. They were looking at everyone's license plates. It's license in plain view in everything. public. We can see it. It's all okay to look at. Call the call the call the Yep. That's you guys. There's a sign. Sir. It's a sign. It's a government goal. There's a sign. There's a public. It's public property. Okay. I, just not, to, I just want to know. Excuse me. Which part of the street? I Don't didn't see, sir. Tyler, did you see it? I did not see it. We just walked in. Okay. We posted. Are you parking? But, hey, Sergeant, will What's you that? come deal with me, bro? In this parking lot. Are you parked in this? No. You seem to be where more level headed than one. You better talk to you. Yes, we walked. Okay, where did you walk from? I walked from over in that direction. So, <laughs> north across the street. Which is another. I don't want to be grabbed by any grabbed. I'm not trying to grab you. The whole point is, the whole point I had, I had to Turn that off. Sorry, man. Go ahead. So just turn that off and just switch to the lot. Turn, the lo turn that off. What you taped is completely, you cannot tape.
They it's were looking through everyone's cars reporting. That's things. not a, everyone's it's called license the plain plates. view doctrine. They were looking at everyone's it's license in plain plates view and Both of them were charged, but later released, with the charges ultimately dismissed. In January 2024, Henry and Ty filed a lawsuit against the county sheriff and Deputy Joseph Kraus, citing 1st, 4th, and 14th Amendment violations. The initial reactions of employees in the video suggest that walking through the lot to access other buildings is normal, indicating that Henry and Ty may have been detained solely due to recording. The outcome of lawsuits like this can vary, either settling quickly or dragging on for years. On November 29, 2022, Kenneth Espinosa was waiting for his son Nathaniel, who had been pulled over by Deputy Male Noel, situated about 75 feet behind the deputy's patrol vehicle in Colorado. The deputy approached Nathaniel and asked for his driver's license. Windows frozen. Okay, what's up? Deputy Noel with your sheriff's office. Let me get your driver's license ready. Pull that dog. Now they get back. What's the problem is? What's the problem? Yeah. Yeah, you're following too closely. Can't you see the roads are icy? You see me slowing down and you're still crew coming up behind me. There's no reason it's for you to be doing that. Brakes in the it's not good. Don't tell me how I should be driving. I'm not okay, you. I'm in a I'm mark. All right, well, I'm in a. That doesn't give you the right to follow a marked patrol car close like that. What if I had to stop? I know there is ice there. That's why I was cruising, so I don't slip. There's no reason for you to be trapped, be that close behind a marked patrol car. Okay, when you find that state in the vehicle, your registration and insurance, I'll be back. A deputy approached Mr. Espinosa and instructed him to leave. As soon as he started moving, the officer suddenly ordered him to stop. You don't need right to be behind here, me, okay? Sir. You need to go. No, I okay. don't. I'm waiting on my son. Right, He's my right back to Wilson. Leave. Leave. That's before. Now you can stay. 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 Hey, stop. Stop. Yes. What the hell do you okay. think you're doing? I ain't doing anything. Okay. Huh? Now you're on a traffic stop and you're I trying to drive away? Get okay. out the car. Call state patrol. Get out the patrol has nothing to do with anything. Hey, Nate, do you see this? Get the car. Do you see this? Get out of the car. Do you see this? Are you recording? Yeah, yeah, we're recording it. Yes. What the hell do you okay. think you're doing? I ain't doing anything. Okay. Huh? Now you're on a traffic Mr. Espinosa promptly halted, indicating his intention to follow their instructions. But still, he was subjected to unnecessary force by the officers, ultimately leading to him being handcuffed. Do you have your wallet on you? Don't do that, man. I'm going to get you out. I'm going to pass search you. Yeah, get out. I got my wallet. Get out now. Jesus, I thought you guys were good, man. I, I stopped behind my man. He was following me to forward, man. Just calm down for Mr. Espinosa claimed that he was tased both during his placement in the patrol vehicle and when attempting to put his vehicle in park after the officers ordered him to stop. Given the minor nature of the suspected offense and the lack of a clear threat, such use of a taser would likely be deemed unreasonable, especially after he was already handcuffed. Following a brief period of incarceration, the charges against Mr. Espinosa were dropped, leading him to file a federal lawsuit citing constitutional violations. Notably, Lieutenant Trujillo, involved in the incident, has a history of criminal convictions, restraining orders, and prior employment with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office. The two deputies implicated are currently on administrative leave, and an external agency is examining the case. On October 16, 2021, 27-year-old Sylvester Hayes was pulled over in Dallas. Officers looked over his driver's license and mistakenly identified him as a wanted domestic violence suspect. When first responders realized Hayes was armed, they pulled him out of the car. However, they later determined that the weapon was legally registered in his name. Hayes was arrested and put into the police vehicle. I'll explain to you. I know. Step I out. I'll explain everything. No, sir. Tell me why. I'll explain. No, I'm trying to get up out the car. I didn't give you permission. I didn't give you permission to. Oh, okay. oh, right now, you are being detained. Come on and step out. Hey, yeah. Okay, that's right. Come on and step out. Come on. 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 Come on.
step out, bro. Come on and step out. Come on and step out. This is gonna get tased. Come on and step out. Come on and step out, bro. Come on and step out. Come on and step out. Come on and step out. Bro. Step out. What are y'all? Man, hello, hello, bro. Come on and step out. Come on, Jesus. We need better leg restraints, Lucy. It's alright, Lucy got it. He gonna run it. Uh, this is my weapon, bro. Come on, you a black man. Look how they doing me. I got, I got four kids, man. I got four kids at the house, man. Weston, 380. Serial number is gonna be November Juliet Whiskey 8843. That is my weapon. This is my name. That's my weapon. This is my name. Bro, I got doing this for no reason, man. I Sir. got, bro. I gotta go get something to eat for my kids, bro. Okay. I gotta go get something to eat for my kids, and that's how they do me. Yo. Another officer arrived and Hayes discussed his situation with him. The officer confirmed there was a warrant out for his arrest. I came in late for everything. And, and they handled me so rough, sir. I ain't, I complied, I said, what am I, what, what y'all, what am I being stuck for? I didn't give nobody no attitude or anything, sir. I got four kids that was waiting on me right now. They are hungry, they are hungry. I'm trying to go feed them, man. Okay. And that's it. That's, okay. I don't know, like they, they say I failed to, failed to signal at the, at the stop sign. At the stop sign? Okay. I mean, I was wrong for that. Yes. So, but, so that was the reason for contact for the stop. Okay. Yes, I understand that. And I was gonna, I was gonna tell him like, what am I being detained for? I don't have any warrants. My name is, I mean, I mean, I have warrants maybe for speeding or something like that. But what, not, what not is for, your name? Not for family violence or anything. What, what is your name? Sylvester Hayes. Sylvester Hayes. A, a name of a champion. And they, and they, 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 they doing this because they. Bro, my, I don't know if it's because my skin is... And that, that, it has nothing to do with the skin. But, but look how they held me, sir. I didn't do anything to well, deserve it. Right. But I, I wasn't pulling. I told him I had a weapon. I told him this. Okay. I told him this. This is my name. Okay. If they run it, it's going to say Sylvester Hayes. Okay. Mr. Hayes. So, and I, I don't know all the story, but there is a another Sylvester Hayes, right? So, give me a second. Right? And, and that Sylvester Hayes does have a warrant. Then maybe that's... Okay. I'm the third, man. Okay, so your last name is Hayes? Hayes. Sylvester Hayes is the third. S S I L B E S T E R. Okay. And then your date of birth? Your February birthday. 23rd, 1996. Okay. And I'm the third. We 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 can handle all this, but when Stuff and stuff like that are in play. I didn't pull in anything, sir. No, no, no. I, and, I, and I never said you did, right? With everything, come on, man. With everything that's going on now, why, the, why would I pull the gun, man? I ain't trying to be another, another. Man, come on, man. I don't have to say it. I don't have to say it, man. It's, it's, I'm fighting for my life, man. I got four babies at the house, man. What if they would? What if happened? And they would have. Come on, man. I understand. For nothing, though. So For here. So My car is up today. I'm paying on it. Like, I got a good job. I work security. I work security. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be one of y'all, but it's like, come on, man. This is how y'all do. This is how y'all do me. I'm, I'm working I, I, to be y'all, bro. I, I, I didn't do anything. Like, My name is Sting, man. Besides speed and tickets, man. Right. I understand. And like what I said, I do apologize. Like, if, if you feel like they, they roughed you up or whatever, I do apologize. But... Anytime that there's a gun involved and like traffic stop and be like, hey, so give us a second. We're going to have these dudes check you out. Give me a second. So, so what did it say about the gun, sir? When y'all ran the serial number, what did it say? When I ran it and you saw me run it, it came back clear. It's not stolen. None of that, right? Nothing. Right. So damn, can I, like... And they don't even know my auntie though. They they in big trouble, man. Why? They in big trouble. They don't even know. I, I look like this, but I got a family that's behind me, man. Subsequently, Hayes filed a lawsuit claiming his first name is spelled S I L V E S T E R, and investigators were actually searching for another Sylvester Hayes who spells his first name 
S-Y-L-V-E-S-T-E-R. According to court documents, Hayes lost his job as a security guard and his home following the arrest. He alleges a violation of his Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment rights during the arrest, asserting that he was racially profiled. The lawsuit includes two counts of excessive force and one count of unlawful arrest. A racially charged dispute between a retired LAPD homicide detective and a young black man has prompted a comprehensive review of numerous cases handled by the former detective. The argument erupted after a traffic accident involving both men. The fallout goes far beyond an exchange of insurance cards. Many of you that have seen the video, it's horrific, right? Because it really illustrates, uh, you know, incredibly racist attitudes by this individual. Under the law, we are required, once we become aware of someone having uh, racist tendencies, as, as in the case of this individual, we have to notify the defense lawyers in all the cases that this individual may have been a witness or participated in the investigation. They're going to question whether or not evidence was planted. They're going to question whether or not uh, he ignored uh, evidence uh, from people of color. Uh, black folks in particular. They're going to question uh, the type of uh, people that uh, he went out. Identified as John Motto, who retired from LAPD's Operation Central Bureau homicide, the department has initiated a review of over 300 cases, including many homicide cases in which Motto was previously involved. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. On June 3rd, 2022, Almira Police Department Police Chief Anthony Alvarez, dressed in plain clothes and driving an unmarked vehicle, observed a potential physical altercation between 30-year-old Isaiah Bowman Thomas and another person in Elmira, New York. Chief Alvarez approached the scene, asking if everything was okay. Bowman Thomas allegedly challenged Chief Alvarez to a fight. Chief Alvarez, noting aggressive movements and an open knife in Bowman Thomas's hand, drew his weapon and ordered him to drop the knife. After complying, Bowman Thomas was ordered to the ground. The initial confrontation wasn't captured on Chief Alvarez's body camera as he wasn't wearing one, but backup officers arrived, and their body cameras recorded subsequent interactions leading to Bowman Thomas's arrest. Now what do y'all do? Just slide in. I don't have no warrants. So what am I being detained for? What am I being detained? He threatened me with a knife. I don't know what else to tell you. He was uh, fighting with a guy on the other side of the street, challenged each other. I pulled up and said, you guys done? He asked me if I wanted to fight. I want you to move along. Come around. Come on, come on. What am I being arrested for? Well, that will be discussed shortly. A bystander witnessed the entire incident and chose to record it. Chief Alvarez requested to view the video, but the woman refused to show him. Hey. Uh, miss? This is, this is, nah, this hey, is, stop, no, whoa. stop. Don't approach her. Get out right? of my car. We're not in your car. Back off or you're going to jail. We're not getting your car. You're not going to tell me to get away from my car. Please back away from us. Right, there's no reason to approach Please the chief. Please back away like from that. my car. I have every right to look at cars. It's called VNT. Okay, I'm going to go look at your car I then, either, all right? You're not identifying yourself, so I'm going to use your vehicle. You're not identifying yourself either. Neither one of Albert you have identified yourself. Albert Nass, 4588. Okay, cool. So I am going to identify you. You are a potential witness okay. in a criminal matter, and okay. now apparently you want to say that the police are abusing their power. Whoa! Get well, out of here, I'm man! Not, no, no I, we don't need that. You don't want you that, I It's just not this. You, it's are not going, you are going to give us, if this is your vehicle... I have no problem giving you my name. Then, that's not what you all so. started. That, that's not what you started. If you, you don't want started. to give us the video, we will subpoena if we need to later. That Go is ahead. Fine. And if you destroy it, it's evidence and it's a felony. So you cannot delete the video. Is that really important? It's not, it's yes. Not, it's not. If you delete the video, you are destroying evidence, which is a felony in New York State. Okay. You filmed me taking my gun out. No, I did not. I did not You've already admitted that. You said you did. I said I've seen it with my eyes. I didn't... Record it. And don't wave your I fist at me again. I didn't. You wave your fist at me again, I'm going to arrest you. I didn't wave my fist at you. Well, Watch the freaking... Rough. Yeah, I said this. That's two. Oh, my God. Get a now grip, Give bro. me your driver's oh, license man. and your registration no, because you drove this car. No, I am not. you ain't. You're giving it to me because whoa, you have to. Whoa. You don't have whoa. a choice but to ID what identify did I, what You did have I to do? identify yourself. What did I do? You drove a car. I can, let me see your driver's license what did, to make what, sure that what? you are a registered driver. Okay. You inserted yourself I'm into the situation, man. No. We no. did nothing to you. That's, no. That's fine. We had that's nothing to do with you until you inserted yourself and started filming. Bowman Thomas faced charges of second-degree menacing and disorderly conduct, 
being released on an appearance ticket. The resolution of these charges remains undisclosed, and it's unclear whether the witness pursued any legal action. In January 2023, Chief Alvarez was terminated from the Almira Police Department. The decision was not directly linked to the mentioned arrest, but was based on his conduct during an investigation into a December 9, 2022 incident where he drove an unmarked vehicle onto a front lawn, brandished his weapon, and threatened to shoot a fleeing suspect. City manager Mike Collins told Chief Alvarez at the meeting, where he was terminated, that, I have completed my investigation, and I have determined that your conduct regarding the incident together with your behavior this past week constitutes unprofessionalism and insubordination. City manager Collins then told Chief Alvarez that he could choose to resign or be terminated, and Chief Alvarez chose termination. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.